Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Step into the refreshing flow of the rivers of living water, a powerful message by Apostle Michael Orokpo. Discover how to tap into the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. Experience the renewal and strength that comes from divine nourishment. Feel the unity and joy that springs from the well of God's presence. Let the rivers of living water flow through you, bringing life and transformation, guiding you to the source of divine life and power. It was death. When the Holy Ghost came into you, He came to introduce a new software into your spirit. And that software is Christ. And then the second thing He does is to cause Christ to flow out of you. That's why Paul said, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. So when we see you, you should be a reflection of a dimension of Christ. So the first river that flows out of you is the essence of Christ that the Holy Ghost installs and conducts through you. And if you study your Bible, you'll find a few of them. Number one of the essence of Christ that the Holy Ghost installs and flows out of you is called eternal life. That means the life that now powers you is not the life of your blood. Listen, man is created a strange creature. Man is the only creature that has three lives walking in him at the same time. There is the animal life in your blood. Leviticus 17:11, the life of the flesh is in the blood so anybody that has flesh has life inside the blood and that's why when you go to the hospital and they take your blood sample they can get every information about your flesh but that's not all the life you have genesis 2 7 god breathed into his nostri and the man became a living soul there is the soulish life in your breath that's the life that gives you understanding but that's not all there is because in Genesis 2 9 God planted a tree of life in the midst of the garden which is the spirit life that's the one the devil stopped him from eating but what the Holy Ghost does is that when he installs Christ in you the life of Christ now flows through you so in 1st John 5 11 to 13 he said this is the record he said God has given unto us eternal life he said that life is in his son he said, whoever has the son has life. He said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you have everlasting life. So the key is for you to know that there is a new life on your inside. Most of us are trying to function by the ecosystem of the fleshly life. So when men struggle, we struggle with them. What you don't know is that God expects that when the animal life fails, when the soulish life fails, you switch to the superior life, the Zoe of God. And when I was reading and studying about eternal life, I thought eternal life just gives you capacities. So you can't fall sick. If you are sick, you receive healing. I thought those was were the things eternal life does. When I now study the epistemology of eternal life, I now discover eternal life is not just about doing things. Eternal life is actually the life of an age. There is a life that powers this age. When the Bible speaks of eternal life, he's talking about a life that powers the age of God. When we are raptured, the world we are going into, that's the life that will sponsor it. That's what God has given us now so that even before that age comes, we begin to taste of it. Now, the age that is to come, men don't fall sick. That's why if you have eternal life, you can live above sickness. Because eternal life brings a new civilization to your realm. In the age that is to come, men don't die. That's why now that you have eternal life, even when your body fails, you transition. Because there's no death in that age. There's no sickness. So what God was doing was to bring us into a civilization that is yet to come. So by implication, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. 
this is why when men in this world are failing, it becomes an error for you to fail. Because you have a life that powers another aeon. It is the reality of that aeon that should power you. Do you know that in the world to come, they don't need aeroplanes? So when the Bible tells you Philip was carried, Acts 8, 39, he's telling you the operation of eternal life. So while you are here, if you need to drive, you can drive. But if there's no car, you can't be stranded. I'm telling you this so that you know where we are compared to where we should be. See, Jesus travels in boats. He preaches in boats. But the Bible said on one occasion, he went to the mountain to pray. And the boat had gone. At the third watch, suddenly they found him walking on water. He was walking on water. And they saw him. They said, he is a ghost. You know why they said that? Because they know spirits live above this realm. So eternal life actually brings us to an order that is superior to this realm. And Jesus said, fear not, it is I. Peter said, if it is thou, bid me come. And Jesus told him, it's not exclusive to me. Come. 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 And Peter thought it was a joke. He stepped out and suddenly the water became frozen. And Peter was walking. Peter was walking. If he kept his gaze on Christ, where the reality came, he would have walked. But he turned back to the world and saw the boisterous wind and entered his soul. That's why when you talk these things, men can't believe. They are in their head. We are functioning from our spirit. It's another aeon superimposed into this aeon. God wants you to live heaven on earth. That's why he gave you eternal life. Did you see Jesus? 5,000 men needed food. And the people walking from their brain said, Sir, don't ask for food. You will stir their appetite. Don't ask. It's a risk to ask. He said, give them something. They said, Sir, a year's wages can't help in this matter. You have preached well for three days. Let them pray in tongues and go home. He said, they will faint on the road. Give them something. They said, well, since you are insisting, it's only a young boy's lunch that is here. Five loaves, two fish. He said, bring it. There is a realm of sowing and reaping. Practice that realm. But there's another realm where you sow from where you didn't reap. Where you reap from where you didn't sow. <laughs> and Jesus said, bring it. And they brought it. He lifted it to heaven. I thank you, oh Father, that you always hear me. Take, give them. What have you done? I, I was wondering what would be on the face of the one who collected it. <laughs> give who? You want me to rob this little boy? I said, give them. They broke it when they gave, they check, it grew. They broke it, they gave, when they check, it grew. What are you saying? Does bread multiply? In the world where we come from, they don't plant there, yet there is food. They don't sow there, yet there is abundance. Because when you come into eternal life, you come into an aeon that is to come. God is not telling you to be irresponsible now. Sow and reap now. But in case it does not work, there's a technology of Rehoboth. Because it's not about the land. It's about who is digging. It's about what he carries. Because when Jacob dug well and they collect it, it dries. He moves, digs another. They collect it, it dries. They now discover the well is not about the location. It's about what who is digging carries. When you carry eternal life, you have entered another aeon. When men fail, refuse to fail. There is a technology on my inside. When God gave me eternal life, he installed heaven on my inside. And when I show up, heaven shows up. I can install heaven in the earth. Rivers. But we have not let it. We have studied too much English. We have studied too much physics. We have studied too much chemistry. We have studied too much sociology. We need to go back to Christology, to pneumatology, to ecclesiology. We need to go back to eschatology. We need to go back to theology of the spirit. There are other syllables beyond the mind. He said concerning the princes of this realm, they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. He said, but I have said, ye are gods because you are the children of the Most High. He said, but you fall like one of the princes. Listen, you will not fall. As you walk out of this conference, the river of life begins to flow through you. Look at the audacity Jesus had. They told him, 
John 11, your friend, the one you love, Lazarus, is dead. <laughs> Jesus looked at them. He said, these people with their human terminologies, <laughs> what is death? I don't know what that means. He relaxed. Four days later, I said, let's go. They said, go where? They say he's dead. It means the chapter has closed. He said, no, he's asleep. In the realm where we come from, people sleep in glory. They don't die. You are reading it to think it's a storybook. That's the reality we've been called into. And when Jesus shows up, Martha met him. If you were here, our brother would not have died. He thought it's about healing. He said, there's something superior to healing. I'm talking life. I'm talking a realm where death does not exist. The same thing Martha said. Mary said the same thing. That means they were operating at the same theology level. Jesus said, where did they keep him? They say, ah, this is four days. The brain decays after 30 minutes. Don't go there. We trust you as a prophet, but don't disgrace yourself. I say, where did you keep him? And when they brought him, the Bible said, Jesus looked up. No rehaza. He said, roll away the stone. <laughs> if you were there, you would say, Master, can I advise? If you stop now, it's still okay. I say, roll away the stone. And the guy rolling it, I could imagine what was going through his head. And when he rolled away the stone, Jesus didn't even do the courtesy of praying under his breath. At least if you pray under your breath, if it doesn't work, you say, I'm asking God to receive his soul. <laughs> I thank you, O oh Father, that you always hear me. Lazarus, come forth. The Bible said, he that was dead came back. You know what? See, human terminology constant, but a superior realm. Him that was dead came back to life. That means he brought a superior dimension and forced the lower dimension to comply. That's eternal life. When the Holy Ghost installed Christ in you, he installed Christ so that this life can come into you. This is not being a church member. This is carrying something that is ancient. Nothing in you dies from tonight. Nothing you touch fails from tonight. Nothing overwhelms you from tonight. In the name of Jesus. I tell my people, function like men because you are still in your body. But when the principles of men fail, change gear. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Somebody didn't know he was carrying this all the while. That's why when you are complaining, the angels are wondering. The Bible said the angels were trying to peep to see what the prophets prophesied about. Because when they perceived of the excellency, they were wild. So a generation is coming that will defy death. A generation is coming that will defy failure. A generation is coming that will de defy defeat. And you showed up, you never knew that you carried it. That's why that river must flow tonight. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. Let me say two more. Please sit for a moment. Our time is fast spent. The second thing that was installed in you in Christ is called righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He made him that was without sin to become sin for us that we might become. He didn't say we will have. We become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What's the purpose of righteousness? See, one of the things righteousness does for you is that when you comply with the word and the spirit, you will live above sin. But the thing is beyond sin. Sin is one of the things that righteousness empowers you to overcome. 
in first john 3 7 he said my little children let no man deceive you he said him that doeth righteousness is righteous in verse 10 he said in this are the children of god made manifest from the children of the devil so righteousness should make you live above sin but it's beyond it in romans 5 17 he said they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness they reign so righteousness makes you reign in life he gives you the authority of a king do you know why god is right all the time it's because of righteousness if god looks at you and you are short he said thomas how are you doing go and check the mirror you'll be shocked that you are thomas you didn't discover it because he can't err righteousness is actually a power that makes anything you do or say to be so all right that's what god gave us that's why he said they that have righteousness a abundance of grace must follow it because without the abundance of grace righteousness can be righteousness the grace supports what you do to be correct so a man who is righteous can show up in a wedding feast and they say water is finished he said it's not my time yet oh. they say no 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 they need wine they need wine wine is finished he said okay fill those water pots when they filled it no prayer take it to the governor that's righteousness at work the water we have to comply because everything created has an intelligence when a righteous man approaches it he superimposed that intelligence and when the king drank it he said ah people bring the best wine at the beginning why did you keep the best for the last they didn't know what was happening a righteous man made that water to become wine that's reigning in life reigning in life is coming to a state where nothing subdues you rather you subdue all things and that's what god installed into us so that when we talk even creation will obey we have the power to change things to align with the will and purpose of god without righteousness it will be impossible what makes us kings is righteousness the moment righteousness comes into you and you begin to leave it out you discover that there's a level of authority you begin to wield that's why those who understand and live righteousness they cannot but reign it brings you into power of rulership and that's not all when the holy ghost came another technology of christ that he gave us is the mind of christ we know not just because we read listen we read we study to show ourselves approved but in case we have not read when it is time to talk we open our mouths wars come he said we have not received the spirit that is of this world first corinthians 2 12 to 14 but the spirit that is of god he said therefore we know the things that are given to us by god he said which things we speak not with words that human wisdom teaches there's no philosophy that can teach it there's no sociology that can teach it there's no chemistry or physics that can teach it he said is the holy ghost that teaches it comparing spiritual things with spiritual he said the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god neither can he know them they are spiritually discerned he went to verse 16 he said but you judge all things because you have the mind of christ there is a mind in your head there's another mind in your heart the mind in your heart is called the mind of christ it was installed in you when the holy ghost came see that's why if you don't allow the holy ghost flow you are cheating yourself when the holy ghost begins to flow it makes you to become like a visible expression of christ and the apostles walked in this realm in first corinthians 11 1 paul said follow me as i follow christ in john first john 4 17 he said as he is so are we not in heaven in this world because we have cooperated with the holy ghost to download to install and to express everything of christ that we that he has this is christianity christianity is not a religion is divinity expressed through humanity and for that to happen you must begin to allow the holy ghost to install and to manifest the dimensions of christ in and through your life you have the life of God. You have the righteousness of God. You are not ordinary. You have things from Christ 
that are your true wealth. Your wealth is not in a bank. Bank can't contain what you have. If a bank can contain your wealth, you are poor. The things we have in the bank are byproducts of our true wealth. My wealth is the life of God. My wealth is the righteousness of Christ. My wealth is the mind of Christ. Throw me anywhere, I will make impact. There is an intelligence that is beyond what mental power can achieve. Go and check. Most of the inventors of the early generation, they were men who knew Jesus. Does it not surprise you? How many first century, how, most of the inventors you know when you study school, how many of them did you hear that they are from other religion? Because these things are downloaded. They are downloaded. It's now that they have opened the space that others can access. The mind of Christ. These are the rivers of your spirit. And that's not all. Hmm. There is the anointing of Christ that is on your life now. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. What were you anointed with? Acts 1 8. Not many days from now, you too shall be anointed with what? The Holy Ghost and power. There's an anointing on your life. You are the one who is not aware. If you know what you carry, you will know that demons are afraid of you. You know the, the irony of this thing? God knows we are powerful beings because he put something on us. Angels know because they are aware. Even demons know. The only people who don't know are the ones who have it. You are the only one who don't know you are anointed. You. You are the only one who don't know. God knows. Angels know. Demons know. You don't know. let me show you how to let it flow because I told you at first you need to know what you have then you let it flow so now when you are engaging the things I will show you you will not just be carried away by the euphoria see prayer is sweet when you break through oh my god those of you who know you know when you break through in prayer you will become volatile if you are not careful you will be carried away he no, no, that's not what you focus. There's what they call prophetic fixation. You can be lost in the realm, focusing on the wrong things. This is why you need to know truth, so that when you enter the realm, you will stay where you need to stay. That's maturity. You cut it there and keep it. When you come out, you come with it. So when you come out of prayer, the glory on your life increase because when you were praying, you were interacting with glory, not your emotion. He said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. He knew what he was looking for. Worship is sweet. You are hearing, do sing song, you are weeping. That's good. But the song is a vehicle. You want to hold something. That's what you are focusing on. So while your emotion is being serviced, you are traveling. Because something must break forth. And by the time it breaks forth, you will know. How do you let it flow number one you must yield when the holy ghost came on jesus matthew 3 17 the bible said the spirit i like the way it was put in mark 1 12. matthew 4 1 luke 4 1 said he was led mark 1 12 said the spirit drove him drove him into the wilderness drove him if you want to release what you carry because now we are dealing with people who have the holy spirit we want to show you how to release the powers of the spirit he will drive you he will drive you there are times when for weeks it looks like eating before six is a sin is the driver walking through your soul because a season has come you are pregnant travail must happen for something to be born there are times when for months to talk looks like an iniquity you won't find anywhere that is written that don't talk but you will know that if you talk something will go wrong you will find out that you are empty because the pressure of the spirit that is designed to drive you came with a law 
he drives you through laws, counsels, and consecrations. So those who understand the drivings of the spirit, when they sense those promptings, their job is to yield. Because if you don't yield, you will quench the spirit. That's why Paul counseled, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, quench not the spirit. Too many are quenching the spirit. In the night, 1 a.m., you wake up, you don't know why. You have been driven. You notice the pattern is consistent for three days. Or God set an alarm. Because after one week, you will wake up again. And what you will not realize is that a cycle has passed. Maybe it will come back in five years. You, you are the one who think your age is 35. Your age is not 35. Your age is six cycles. Because your cycles come every six years. And some people have missed all those cycles. It's called Kairos moments. The Kronos moment is designed to prepare for the Kairos moment. The Kairos moment is what determines your age. Some of us have 12 cycles in our lifetime. Some have 5. Some have 15. If you don't maximize it, have you not noticed? Some of you, it's every 4 years that you go to a revival meeting. Or you meet a prophet. Or you have an encounter. It happened to you when you were in, primary, in, in, in SS2. It happened to you now you are in 300 level. It happened to you third year in work and you think these are common you are not sensitive you don't know that cycles are happening the world is designed to work in seasons and cycles corn doesn't grow every time mango does not produce every time that is the same way your spiritual dimensions are not activated every time what the holy ghost does is that he carries you through trainings either through the church you attend the pastors that mentor you until the season comes then the driver shows up and then all of a sudden, you start sensing that all your salary, you should give it to the orphanage or give it for church project. And you're wondering, why, why, why? It doesn't happen all the time. You are being driven. Because the Holy Ghost wants to bring you to a corner where your spirit depends on him only. And everything that will be a distraction, he will take you away from it. Some of you is movies, some is food, some is money. He will drive you away from all of those things. Even Jesus, the Son of God, had to be taken to the wilderness. The idea of the wilderness is not for you to suffer. He said he suffered them to hunger so that they may know that man shall not live by bread alone. It's a training to help you trust and depend on God because you have found a comfort zone. And in that comfort zone, the river can flow. So the Holy Ghost will make sure he takes you away from the comfort zone so that the waters of life can gush out. This is why the Bible said, they that believe, out of their belly shall flow rivers. But you have not seen anyone. The reason is because rivers flow after you are driven. When Jesus yielded, Matthew 4.1, Matthew 4.15, he said, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. This man is 30 years old. He has walked these borders before. What happened? You must be driven before the waters break forth. He returned in the power of the Spirit. The power was there, but you will return in that power until you have paid the price of yieldedness. Those are the days when your pride will be crushed. Those are the days when your confidence in the flesh will be crushed. And like Paul, you will say, We are the circumcision that worship God in the Spirit, rejoicing in Christ Jesus having no confidence in the flesh. The Holy Ghost will become your weapon. But you must be driven. The second thing that makes for the release of the Spirit is to tarry in His presence. Because after you are driven, you will now discover that a second law will be given to you to remain there. Acts 4, 26-31 the apostles were driven, they were in the upper room until the day of the outpouring. After the outpouring, the Sanhedrin show, showed up, arrested them, and flogged them thoroughly. Their confidence depleted. They knew that they had to go back to Tari. Because what we cause those cycles to now begin to repeat is the power of Tari. And in Acts 4, 29, 30, the Bible said, after they tarried, it said the place where they were was shaking. They were filled with the Holy Ghost again, and they spoke with boldness. Verse 33 said, with great power, the God gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. Great grace was upon them. If you can't tarry, you can't release life. Jesus, Matthew 17, from verse 2 to 4, he went to the mountain. The Bible said, as he prayed, 
the fashion of his countenance was altered his raiment began to glister it's like refinery those of us who study chemistry it's, it's a fractionating tower kind of thing the crude oil is there just hit it when you hit it for a while everything will start going up at different boiling points they will separate into mist you will cool it and collect it so something will separate at 60 degrees turn to 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 to, to vapor you will collect it on the other side cool it and collect it another one is at 80 another one is at 100 that's how those rivers open wisdom for you may take 40 degrees but favor may take 90. so you can know everything you are talking people say kai this guy is a bit something so but nobody will be led to bless you because you are operating at the heat frequency of wisdom you have not entered favor so when 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 paul was advising he said you dearly beloved he said building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost everything you have is in the technology of faith he said but it will take prayer for it to distill so that it becomes experiential reality Daddy! otherwise the realities of god will be mixed in you as crude wisdom and favor and power is all junk together no one is manifesting it's when you tarry that they separate into different fractions and those fractions are the things that will change your destiny so if you want the river to flow you must tarry those of us who go uh, father we love you and sleep <laughs> you will see that your younger brothers that you supported with school fees will pass their generation will separate them you will be angry with god but it won't change your story if you want your story to be changed you will stay on the altar your knee will become like a camel pray there sleep there wake up there pray again can we rise up let it flow let it flow hey. let it flow let it flow you must squeeze out these things from your spirit too much is locked there now after you tarry number three you take steps of faith over oh, man know it not thou that faith without works is there thou believest that there's only one god thou doest where the devil also believes and trembles but faith without works is there after you tarry instructions will come step out only those who walk out see the glory of God. It's a day that journey to the deep. They are the ones that see the wonders of God. You don't pray for the sick, you will not find healing. You don't go for evangelism, you will not know what of knowledge. You don't give, you will not know abundance. You must take steps of faith if the river will flow. And finally, allow yourself to be inspired that those who have gone ahead of you. You say, follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. If they have obtained before, they can show you the way. Hey, they can show you. I know the things that happened to me because I focused on Bishop Oedeko. I know the things that happened to me because I focused on Pastor Chris. They were troubled. See, those who trained us, they trained us with three things. Prayer and fasting, the word and stories. Those days, if you hear some stories, you, you food, appetite will die. I heard of the story of a man, a saint called Dennis. Saint Dennis. He was so crazy about so winning. He was going, they cut off his head. The story said he carried his head on his hand and he trekked for several miles preaching. Where he fell down was where they built the cathedral. They cut a head, the head of a man. He carried the head. The head was preaching. Jesus. <laughs> Those were the kind of things they were telling us. I heard the story of St. Anthony of Padua. That 30 years after he died, his tongue was still fresh. I said what? They say he was a rugged preacher. The day he died, all the bells in the cathedrals in Padua were ringing on their own and children were wailing because one who carried witness has departed. Can you hear such stories and sleep? That's why some of us told God, if we will preach, we must preach with fire that a man's tongue didn't decay. The things they touched, a generation will rise. And you are part of that army you are part of that army you didn't come here just to hear and to see men shine you came here because there is a shine on your inside that must manifest can we pray for one minute come on somebody who is scared Let's 
years is coming up and we'll have time to worship and pray but please hear me everything i've shared here is for christians those who have jesus if you don't have jesus don't be excited i'm not talking to you you are making a mistake oh, an anointing will fall here this night too. there's an anointing ancient dimensions ancient mantles ancient oracles God, people will rise here as custodians 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 witnesses are coming oh witnesses he said you have come to mount zion the city of the living god to an innumerable company of angels witnesses are coming to the earth we are about to enter the last phase and a new kind of christianity will begin ah. let's do what's important don't worry when this thing comes up we can press in if you are here and you have not publicly confessed jesus as your lord you have missed out meanwhile i didn't talk about the second river the second river are the rivers of your spirit like love patience kindness mercy consecration but i don't have time for that notwithstanding if we know this one is enough if you are hearing me now you have not made jesus your lord and savior please lift your right hand you can't escape this moment lift that hand up be bold about it lift that hand up i want to surrender now wherever those hands are lifted run to the front now this is your moment run here now have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner i need and want your forgiveness i accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!